Resident Evil 4. Hello there. Sorry from 17 once again. This is my Resident Evil 4 professional no damage run. This is chapter 5-3. This is part 1. And we're moving now steadily towards the end of the game. Things are going to start getting considerably more difficult as we come up against boss fights, massive gauntlets of enemies, and a sequence which you might not be expecting to be as challenging as it is because they change how it works on professional. This room here is kind of tricky, but it's only tricky because there's a lot of enemies, there's a lot with stun batons, there's a lot with shields, they flank you, they, you know, they get up close to you pretty quickly, and it's just densely packed and there's not too much room to navigate but aside from that you should be fine with it's nothing new it's nothing different it's just using the skills and mechanics that we're now familiar with to, to succeed you know it's video games 1.1 so speaking of 101 i purchased the wonderful 101 for the wii u it's the game that made me want to buy it on top of obviously the obligatory bayonetta 2 and it came today so I, I had the system for, for two days before I got a game for it. That was very lucky right there, but thankfully I was able to navigate around him. And now we have a Laplagas. So a flash grenade, and then run in and finish off that dude. Simple stuff. So in the meantime, what I was doing is I was playing the, the Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate demo, and I was playing the wonderful 101 demo. I played the, the 101 demo considerably more than the Monster Hunter 1, because I thought that the Monster Hunter demo was incredibly poor. You already know this, you've watched the playthrough, you've heard me uh, poking some fun at that game, which a lot of people have, holding very high regard, and I'm looking forward to doing the same once I understand it, or, you know, being a contrarian to it, if not. But the wonderful 101, it allowed you to play the second level, all the way up to just before the stadium. And there was only, I think, two more missions inside of that level, before it was at the end anyway, but... For some reason, it cut you off there, and it did a really interesting thing. It, it gave you access to things that you don't normally have when you play the game, which I really like, because it gives you a better impression of what the game is. And uh, I played through it a lot. I played it... How many times did I played through? Maybe 10, 20 times? I had a lot of fun with it. You know, I got a couple of pure platinums, you know, got a couple of overall platinum ranks... I experimented with the enemies, I learned the tells and things, I got comfortable with the controls, with the drawing mechanics, all that kind of good stuff. But at the same time, you were limited, and you could tell you were limited because you didn't have access to any skills, and obviously when you play the game, there'll be tons to buy. You didn't have access to all the Unite commands, and in the game, there'll obviously be tons. Oh, a quick word as well, folks. If I say, ooh, that was a close one, but I was able to back away from him, uh, that is a part of the video that probably doesn't exist anymore because I just got hit and I missed the edit, so I've had to trim it out. So I do apologise if I get excited and you look up from your computer like, whoa, 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 what did I miss? You missed something that now doesn't exist. And uh, because I'm enjoying the commentary and I don't want to re-record it, I'm just going to keep rolling. Because a lot of producers on YouTube uh, can be quite sticklers when it comes to commentary. I myself, I'm quite relaxed. It's not that I don't want to have a high quality product at the end, because I do believe that I achieved that. It's more of a case of, I like it to be natural. I like it to to feel good about it. And I would rather feel good about it than be overly anally retentive when considering it. Because you can be. You know, you can analyse how you speak, you can analyse the cadence of your voice, you can check out, are you going mmm too much, are you going and too much, are you saying actually repeatedly like some kind of mental virus. There's a million and one things you can overanalyse, you can listen back to it and just not feel like you did it a decent enough justice. There are so, such nuance to this craft, but you lose a lot of the personality to it, I feel. And obviously that, that stuff is really important, but... It's important to a certain part, and if you do lose the personality, sometimes it can sound like you're reading, and unless that's your style, and there's a lot of people who do that, it, it'll sound forced. And I, I listen to a guy called Wings of Redemption, who's been a content producer for as long as I've been on YouTube, you know. He's, he's come a long way. And every so often, Wings will do these ones where he isn't just talking to you, he isn't just, you know, letting it rip, doing it off the cuff. It's stuff that he's prepared, and in Wings' mind, uh, this is effort, this is, you know, more production value, this is more editing, this is more work, and thus, this is better, you know, it's this 
binary thing of more work, more better. And I don't think that's always true. And one of the things I really like about Wings is he's honest, you know, he's honest to a fault. A little bit like myself in some cases. But when he does these recited commentaries, they always sound lesser in, in for, for me as a subscriber to him, because they sound weird, you know. I'll never forget watching a video by Vegeta, is it 311, the, the Dark Souls guy who got quite big, because um, he was a really good player. He did, I think he was talking about point, no, he was talking about backstabs in one of his playthroughs. I think it was like his, his points playthrough, where he killed things with one shot to try and get so many points. You can't skip this, by the way, because there's quick time events, and they're incredibly fast, so you need to be on your toes. And during it, it was live commentary, and then at one point it turned into like a fucking lecture because he was telling you about the mechanics of the backstab and how if they change it or they tweak it, you might find out that you're missing something that was fundamental to the game. And it was a really well put together commentary, but it, it went from a dude talking to you to this like full on soliloquy out of nowhere and it was the kind of thing you can't say off the top of your head because your brain doesn't work that way and anybody who's done any public speaking anybody who's done any writing or speech writing knows you can sound so much better if you conduct something in writing and then read it than you ever will by just firing because it's easier you know you don't have to respond you don't have to be quick fire or on the ball you just have to read and reading you know can be quite tough i guess especially if it's high pressured but for the most you're just reciting something that you've already done all the hard work with so the juxtaposition of these two things in his video was so jarring it was just weird like he was even doing it in like a fucking documentary voice and it it didn't work for me it killed it completely killed it and don't get me wrong the guy makes fantastic content and he was doing it his own way but not my style not my thing so uh, I like to I like to let it flow and I get a lot of people that ask me do I read off of scripts and things and I like to think my commentary would be better if I did but I also like to think it would be worse in some ways because you wouldn't get those ridiculous moments where I say things I possibly would not have written but this is the end of this kind of contrived sequence it's pretty famous this especially for speedrunners because a lot of them do the voices and like act it out and things because you can't skip it so when they speedrun this game 20 times a day oh, well not that's a bit of an exaggeration but you know what I mean they, they have to watch this shit a lot this is literally 10% of runs probably if they're, if they're really good or maybe not 10% but you get what I mean but back to what I was saying the wonderful 101 so there were there were niggles for me personally on the demo they locked a lot of features away, but they're going to do that, it's a demo. And it kind of builds you up in some ways and, and deflates you in other ways. So what I'm noticing now that I've played the actual game is I don't have the skills I had in the demo and I'm far a, or further into the game than, than that demo level. So when I, I came to playing through the sequence I actually knew, it became difficult because I didn't have the ability to, to launch enemies, I didn't have the ability to knock them in the air when they were stunned and combo them and things. So my entire philosophy of fighting on that game just crumbled because I didn't have the tools to do it and it was really weird. And it was a little bit frustrating because the way I'd been fighting, the way I'd, I'd learned the game was no longer available to me. And there's a lot of moments during playing Wonderful 101 where the game is so confusing, so completely obfuscating that you're literally saying to yourself, I might not be having the most amount of fun right now, but I will once I understand what the hell is going on. And that's happened to me currently on the boss I've just fought. I've, I've just taken on the first boss that's a, a multi-phase boss fight. Very epic, very crazy looking, very just imaginative and awesome. But the most confusing thing I think I've ever played. But I am getting the feeling, and I've been having this feeling ever since I touched it on the demo, that once I do understand what's happening, and I'm not getting confused and a little bit frustrated, it's probably going to be one of the best games ever made, because there's just something really special about this game. And that's what makes it really sad that I couldn't find it in any of the shops, which means it's not selling. You know, it's not available. It's, it's going to do what most of Platinum games do, which is just not very well, which is completely criminal, because they're some of the best games that you can buy. But... Everything's really expensive at the moment on it, so I can't buy many of the skills. I'm working towards them, and I'm really looking forward to getting them because it's it's one of those things where, 
you know, the the Master Keys mantra for Dark Souls where, you know, the first playthrough, the second playthrough is the reward of the first playthrough because you've learnt it, you know, you, you've took your beatings, you've come back with the knowledge and you've applied it and you've had so much more fun the second time around and I think the Wonderful 101 is going to be just like this. This is U3, Unknown Boss or something daft, he's got a really silly name. It's essentially a, an environmental puzzle. You don't really have to fight this thing at all except for the second phase which is going to be very simple if you've got a rocket launcher and you should have but as soon as it begins he's always in front of you the best thing to do is to to lure him into an attack like i did just then step forward step back and then everything from this point onwards is luck it's all rng if he swings at you and it gives you a quick time event to dodge it awesome if he swings at you and it doesn't bullshit that's all you've got and what you want to do is you want to know your path, know exactly where you're going, know exactly what you're doing, because that's the, literally the only way you can do this. There's no way to do this by accident. This is all designed, because it's too specific to know what's happening. And you're going to make a few mistakes, because there's no checkpoint here. You have to do all phases of this fight. And this particular part here, the reason why I shoot him then is to make him jump away. Because when I was running past him, he kept clipping me. I was getting frustrated, so I just decided to try shooting him, and it worked. There's only one trick you're going to see me do in this entire sequence, and I saw it on a speedrun. It involves throwing a grenade at a, a wall, which blows up one of those things you've seen me shooting on the other side of the wall. Run over to this corner. I think I fuck it up as well on this run. Oh no, I got it right. There you go. The throw was pretty bad though, you want to try and get it as close to that corner as you can. Now that you've pressed that button, it means you only have to press the button over here, and then you can get past the monster, because the monster's always going to be up your ass on this point. He's going to be like a big old suppository. Don't panic, you can run past him. It looks really hairy, but he never hits you, it seems. As long as you do the path you just saw me run, he will never hit you. And then all you need to do is hit this door, and you have a checkpoint, and it's well earned. That was what? three minutes worth of gameplay that maybe took me about 20 minutes to do it was really really finicky for my tastes and once again if you could control the quick time prompt or if this game had a traditional evade it would probably be very simple but as it stands you're at the mercy of a mechanic that sometimes does not save you so this part is easy fire a rocket and then stab it once with the knife and it's dead Anybody who's never killed the boss that way or who's never seen a speedrunner do that will probably be mind blown right there as well. But Fighting him is so boring. You run around this place using barrels to blow him up. You, you try messing with the switches to trap him in these areas. You, you pepper him, you run away, you pepper him. It's, it's just trite. So instead, rocket to the mouth, knife to the brain. Good day, sir. And now we can do some pillaging. And we have just about a minute left in the video, so I can't really go back to Wonderful 101, so I'll save that for the next one. And anybody wondering, I am going to be covering the game. I have no idea what it's going to be like putting a Nintendo game up on YouTube. Bayonetta is killing me with Sega at the moment because I'm getting nothing for one of my all-time favourite projects, and it's really sad. That was me hitting my teeth with the fucking glass, because apparently depth perception is something I wasn't born with. But just keep on moving through here, and we're going to be moving towards part two. I believe this is going to lead us out into the camp, and then from there we're going to be pushing towards arguably the hardest part of the game, which is, of course, fighting Krauser. I would disagree. As much as Krauser's a nightmare and will kill you in, like, one hit, it's nowhere near as bad as the damn chopper section, which is coming very shortly. So, that's the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. As always... You take care now.